Test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Dave Banks, and I'm going to be your organiser for today. I'm just going to take you through a very brief introduction to explain how to use the control panel and how to ask questions or give some of your comments. So today's webinar is part of our series of regular talking points webinars and today we're going to be looking at community interest companies and the new online incorporation process. It's planned to last for around an hour depending on the volume of questions that we receive from your good selves. So for today's webinar we're going to be joined by Jackie Lewis who will be providing you with a presentation before we move on to a Q&A session towards the end of today's webinar. So I'm going to encourage you to ask questions and to provide your comments with regards to today's subjects. But due to the subject of the webinar, we won't be able to answer any client or case specific questions. This is because the team would need to look at all of your clients' relevant individual circumstances before being able to give a solid answer. So to avoid your disappointment, we urge you not to post case or client specific questions. If you do have client specific questions, you can refer to the handouts that are available to, um, to you today for the guidance that you will need. Okay, so for those of you who are new to Talking Points, instructions on how to ask questions um, will be on the control panel, which is on screen now. Um, and you will be, if you have any problems trying to download the handouts, which is part of the control panel, um, then you can write to the email address that we are about to share with you via the questions box. So please refer to the title of today's webinar in the subject line of your email. So the email address is going in there and you should be able to see that around, around about now. It's team.agentengagement at hmrc.gsi.gov.uk. So if you're dialing in from a mobile device, your control panel may take the form of a toolbar and you would need to tap on the question mark icon to ask questions. Now, as I mentioned earlier, today's presenter is Jackie Lewis, who works in community interest companies and will be joined by her colleague, Marilyn Lydon, who's going to help us with the question and answer session at the end of, towards the end of the webinar. So they're going to be answering your questions verbally or with a typed response where appropriate. And a recording of today's webinar will also be made available after the broadcast and a link will be issued to you all via email within the next few days. So just before I hand over to Jackie, if we have any groups of attendees taking part together today, if I could just ask you to let us know via the questions box by telling us how many additional agents are taking part. So if, for example, there are three of you taking part as a group, then if you could please type plus two in the questions box, that then enables us to determine how many people have actually uh, attended today's webinar. So if, um, if you're happy to do that, then that's great. Now, without further ado, I am going to pass over to Jackie, who is going to deliver the presentation for you today. Okay, thanks, Dave. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Dave said, my name is Jackie, and I'm a case manager within the Office of the Regulator of Community Interest Companies. In this webinar, my aim is to give you a brief explanation of what community interest companies are, and an overview of the new online incorporation process for community interest companies, or KICS for short. The online incorporation process will be available very soon, and as such, the screens you will see may vary a little with the final product, but the aim today is to be able to give you a good idea of what to expect. Please be aware that for the purposes of this webinar, 
we're assuming that the registration is for a kick limited by guarantee. As we go through the online process, you'll become aware that some of the answers you give will direct you to a different service and you will not be able to continue with this particular one. This will be clearly explained as we go through the screens. You will appreciate we are unable to cover all eventualities in the time given, but we hope to give you a good idea of what to expect from the new procedure. For those of you who are familiar with the ordinary Kepley online registration, you will recognise much of the procedure. However, there will be screens that are specific to kicks which you will not have seen before. As you go through the service, you will also see that there will be a Get Help With This Page link at the bottom of each screen, as well as some further links to information. You can click on these links at any time if you're not sure about the information required. You'll be provided with two options at that time, either to get a help via message or by telephone support. As stated earlier, some of the screens that you will see are generic for all companies and some are kick-specific. Many are self-explanatory and I'll try to get through these as quickly as I can. Don't forget, if you have any questions at all during this webinar, please do not hesitate to send them to the team who are waiting to receive them. The team consists of members of New Company section from Company's House as well as members from our kick team and all are ready and waiting to answer any questions you may have. Okay, so what am I going to cover today? I'm going to talk about what a community interest company is, the community interest test, and give an overview on how to incorporate a kick using the online process. So first of all, what is a kick? Well, they're a type of limited company for people wishing to establish businesses which trade with a social purpose or benefit the community. Kicks can and do make a profit, but 65% of that profit must be put back into the company or used to benefit the community it was set up to serve. The key feature of a community interest company is that it provides benefit to the community and uses its assets to promote those aims. The kick model is particularly suitable for those who wish to work within the freedom of the familiar limited company framework without either the private profit motive or charitable status. It offers flexibility and the opportunity to operate on a corporate basis whilst delivering community benefit. A kick can be a company limited by guarantee, company limited by shares, or a public limited company. But you should consider carefully the company form most appropriate for your kick, because once incorporated, a company limited by guarantee cannot be converted into a company limited by shares or vice versa. Very few company activities are excluded from becoming kicks. However, kicks should not be formed for political or lobbying related purposes. Benefit in the community is what kicks are all about and providing they can pass the community interest test, there are very few restrictions on the activities that a kick can be engaged in. So onto the community interest test. A part of the kick application is the community interest statement, which is made on a form CIC 36. Here the kick declares that its activities will be carried on for the benefit of the community and explains how this will be achieved. This community interest statement must satisfy the regulator that a reasonable person would consider the kick's activities would be carried on for the benefit of the community. And this is known as the community interest test the kick will have to continue to meet this test throughout its life. A company will not satisfy the test if it's involved in certain political activities or if a reasonable person might consider that its activities are carried on only for the benefit of the members of a particular body or the employees of a particular employer. So on to the process on how to apply to become a community interest company using the new online system. This is compiled using three government department services, Companies House, HMRC and the Office of the Community Interest Companies. 
So before you start the registration, it's important that you ensure that you have downloaded your computer and completed and signed version of the form CIC 36, and that this has been converted to a PDF format. Please note that the signature field in section D of the form CIC 36 will require a physical signature. You must also complete and download the relevant articles of association for the CIC. Again, this must be in a PDF format. You'll be asked to upload both documents later in the registration service. The filing fee for an online incorporation for a kick is £27. You'll be asked to pay this fee by giving your card or PayPal details, so make sure you also have these with you before you start the registration. So let's get started. These pages particularly will be very common to agents that may be listening, so we'll try to get through these fairly quickly. So the first thing you need to do is to log into the Companies House website and on the home page click on Start in a Company. On the Start in a Company screen click on Set up a Private Limited Company. And on the Set up a Private Limited Company screen click on Register your Company which you can see is next up from the bottom of the list on the screen. For this webinar, we're assuming that you're starting a new application, so you would click, click Yes on this screen. If you've already started the registration, click No, and you'll be directed to a different screen to log your login, your details, and take you to your saved application. This screen prepares you for some questions about whether you can use this service to register a limited company and set up corporation tax. It will take you to another service if you're not eligible to use this one. You click on the green screen then to continue to the questions. As I mentioned at the start of this webinar, you can only pay for this service by card or by PayPal. This screen asks if you're able to pay by either method. If you have these details to hand, click yes and click on the green box to continue. This screen asks about the number of officers your kick will have. The service will not allow for more than five at present, so click on no and then the green button to continue. So will the parent company control the company you're setting up? Click no and continue. If the answer is yes, I'm afraid again you'll be unable to continue with this service and you'll be taken to a different one. Here you are asked if the kick will be taken over another business, such as buying another limited company or changing a sole trader or partnership business into a limited company. The link in blue will take you a definite, to a definition of the sole trader or partnership business if you're unsure. Click no and then continue. Again, if the answer is yes, you'll be unable to continue with the service and you'll be taken to a different one. This screen asks if there are any directors or persons with significant control, or PSC for short, who are on the company's house secure register. Now the secure register is for victims of threatening behaviour or violence who cannot risk having their home address information on the public register. If the answer is yes, you are unable to proceed with the service, so please click no and continue. You will also see that there is a link on the screen to take you to a definition of a person with significant control if you are unsure about what this means. You are now asked to set up a Government Gateway user ID for the kick that you are incorporating. The blue link takes you to advice if you need to set up multiple companies. Click on the green box to create Government Gateway user ID to continue. I'm now going to take a short break and just hand back to Dave for a quick polling question. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, so th thanks for the start of the uh, presentation and uh, some useful bits of information in there already. So um, if you haven't taken part in polling questions on previous Talking Points webinars before, uh, just, so that you, just so that you know, we won't see your individual votes. 
Um, but once the polls close, we'll be able to see the overall results as a percentage score of those that have chosen to take part. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to do so, um, as these act as a very useful feedback for the team that are presenting the webinars. Uh, so please do get involved where you can. So I'm going to pick out a poll now and uh, let you have this first one now. So as you can see, we um, on your screen right now, you are being asked a question. And that question is, have you used the Government Gateway Service? Um, so it's a yes or no answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave um, you for a few more seconds just to, to get that information in from you. Um, and then we can um, have a look at how many people have and how many people haven't. Um, so at the minute, we've got quite a number of people that are voting. So I'm just going to wait for another few seconds just to give you the opportunity to, to get involved in this poll. And then I'll close it off and have a look at the results. OK, so there's about um, well, there's quite a quite a high number of you that have uh, that you've got involved with this. So I'm just going to close it off now and uh, we'll then just have a look at the uh, the results. And here they are. So as you can see, we've got 86 percent of um, you who have joined today's webinar who have already used the government gateway service. Um, so thankfully that's um, hopefully that's going to be helpful for you if you do need to use it again for those of you who haven't then gov.uk will be the place for you to go and have a look at um, to access information about the government gateway service and it'll give you a bit more information uh, about that um, for you to use it in future so thanks for getting involved in the poll what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pass over to Jackie, who will continue with today's presentation. Thanks very much, Dave. That's great. OK, back to the presentation. We're on some personal details here now that you have to answer. Uh, so here you need to answer your personal details so you can set up your ID. Once you've filled in the information that you see on the screen, you just click on continue and you'll be taken to another screen that gives you your KICS unique government gateway ID. I'm not showing this in the presentation because it will be unique for you at the time. You'll need this whenever you sign into the service in the future. Okay, so this screen now asks you to choose an email address that you'll be using for any communication about the kick. Companies House will use this email address to create an account for you. Click on your choice and then the green box to continue. And here you state your relationship to the kick. Choose the relevant title and then click the green box to save this information and to continue with the service. So this is a new screen that's specific to KICS and is self-explanatory. Will the company be a community interest company? Click yes, and then the green box again to save and continue. This screen now asks whether the kick is limited by guarantee or limited by shares and gives a brief description of each type. Limited by guarantee is the most common ty type of kick, especially if you're going to be applying for grants or funding. Uh, limited by shares means that you'll have shareholders who may be paid dividends in the future. So you choose which type of kick that you want, and then you click on the green box again to save and continue. And here you fill in the name of the kick and choose a name ending. If you click on the Welsh name endings, you will have a choice of the Welsh equivalents to these. Once you're happy, then you click on save and continue. So this screen now, you enter the details of the KICS registered office. You can either click on the uh, property name and number and the postcode, or you can enter the address manually. 
Once you've finished, click on the Save and Continue button. On this screen, enter the details of the Kicks Red. Sorry, where will the company be registered now? Remember that the Kick must be registered in the same part of the UK as its registered office. For example, companies registered in Scotland must have their registered office in Scotland. Click on the button that best describes the part of the UK where the kick will be registered, and then you click Save and Continue. This screen asks you to choose the kick's principal place of business and will automatically pre-populate with the details previously given as the kick's registered office. If the kick does not have a principal place of business yet, click on the blue link to get further information and advice. If you're happy with what you're going to uh, put in, click on the correct button and hit green to save and continue again. Here you'll be asked for one or more ways to contact the kick, such as contact telephone numbers and an email address. Once completed, again, click the green button to save and continue the, with the service. This screen asks when the kick is likely to start trading and is fed over to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Click on the button that best describes when the kick will start trading, then click the green box again to save and continue. Here you're asked if within the next three months the kick will be paying interest on any non-bank loans, making royalty payments, or receiving interest or dividend payments from overseas investments. Again, this information is fed to HMRC. Click either yes or no and hit again the green button to save this information and continue. So now on to the activities of the kick. Start typing a gener generic description of the kick's activities and you will receive a drop down list. Or if you know it, type in the relevant SIC code. Click on one of the buttons that best describes what the kick will be doing. But if you can't find a business activity on the list which best describes your kick, click on the blue link for help. Once you've chosen the activity for your kick, hit the green button to save your details and continue. This screen just asks you to confirm the activities that you have chosen and gives you the opportunity to add another business activity if you wish to do so. Once again, confirm and continue once you're happy with the information given. Now this screen asks if anybody in the application has ever sent a secure register form to ask Companies House for protection. This includes company directors and PSCs. If the answer is yes, you will not be able to continue with this particular service. Click no and then the green button to save and continue. On this screen, you are asked to give the details of the directors of the kick. Fill in all the boxes and as soon as you've finished, save and continue the screen. This screen now asks you for the correspondence address of the director or directors. It will automatically give you the registered office address, but you may choose a different address. Once completed, click on the green box again to save and continue. This screen asks for the home address for the director or directors. This address will not appear on public record. Again, it offers you, the, offers you the registered office address, but you may choose a different address. Once you've completed this, click the green button to continue. So here you're asked to check and confirm the director's details. You're also given the opportunity to remove or add a director's details. Once you're happy that these are all correct, click the green button to save your details and continue again with the service. So now we're on to the company guarantors. Make sure you have the information to hand, such as how much the guarantors are agreeing to give the company if it can't pay its debts. You may click on the blue link for a definition of a guarantor if you're unsure. Click on the green button then to continue. 
And now the screen asks if the director or directors are also guarantors. Click on the appropriate answer and then the green box to save and continue. This screen gives you the opportunity to give details of any other guarantors other than the directors. You also have the opportunity to add further guarantors by clicking on the blue link. Click the appropriate answer, enter any further details, and then save and continue. Now here you're asked just to check and confirm the guarantor details. Once you're satisfied that these are correct, click save and continue. Here you should state how much the guarantors will guarantee the company should it fall into debt. This is usually just one pound, but another amount may be given. Once you've completed this, once again, save and continue to the service. Here you're asked to check and confirm the guarantee details. And once you're happy, click again the green box to confirm and continue. This screen tells you that you're about to set up the Persons with Significant Control, or PSCs, and explains what constitutes a PSC. Make sure you have these details to hand before you click on Continue. And now you're asked if any of the directors are also PSCs. Choose Yes or No for each director, then click Save and Continue. Here you'll be asked if any of the directors of the KIC will be distributed a share of the KIC's profits. If the KIC is limited by guarantee company, the answer will be no. Click the green button to save and continue. And here you state what percentage of voting rights each director will own. Once complete, again, save and continue. Here you state whether any of the directors will have the right to appoint or remove company directors. Choose yes or no, and then again save and continue. Now check and confirm that the details that you have given about the persons in control of the kick are correct. Once you're satisfied that all the details are correct, you must click save and continue the screen again. Okay, now I'm just going to take another short break and hand you back to Dave just for another uh, polling question. Over to you, Dave. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so we've, we've just covered persons with significant control um, in the presentation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask you uh, a question about that. So I'll uh, launch the second polling question so please get involved again so here it is on the screen so how confident are you now with your knowledge of what a person with significant control is so please get involved so i can see that uh, people are voting straight away so that's uh, that's really good um, so if you continue to do that for the next uh, I'm going to give it another 20 seconds or so to give uh, everybody the opportunity to get involved with this polling question. <clears throat> so we're getting more and more people who are telling us how confident that they feel, so, which is good. So I'll give it another five seconds or so and then I'll close the poll and then I'll share with you um the responses that everybody has come up with so here we go so there you go so close now and i will share that result with you so as you can see we have um 63 percent of today's attendees who are telling us that they are confident what we also know is 28 percent of people feel more confident with the information that we've uh, we've provided still a few people um, who aren't confident yet um, about what a person with significant control is. So hopefully the information that is provided to you, I mean, we will get this recording uh, of the webinar sent out. So you may be able to get the opportunity to have another look across this as well um, before you, uh, you understand a bit more about that. So again, 
thank you very much for getting involved in our polling question. It does give us information that we can help to use in the future to make our webinars a little bit better for you when you um, log on to them again. So before anything else, um, I'll thank again, thanks again. Um, and I'm going to hand you back to Jackie, who will be able to uh, complete the rest of today's presentation. Okay, thanks again, Dave. That was uh, great and very interesting results there. Okay, back to the procedure for the online incorporation. We're on to the very different screens now. Um, whether you're an agent or not, you won't be familiar with these. Um, it's all about uploading the Form CIC 36 and the Articles of Association. So, at the beginning of the service, you were asked to ensure that you had a copy of the Form CIC 36 and the Articles of Association that you wanted the kick to adopt. This screen is now preparing you to get ready to upload these documents. Uh, as soon as you're ready, uh, we would say to continue with the service to go ahead and upload these. So first of all, your CIC 36 form. If you haven't already done so, you would download and complete the, uh, the, and sign, the signed form CIC 36 then and save it into a PDF format. That's very important, the PDF format. And then you'll save this to your PC. Once you've done this, you click on the select a file to upload button. That will upload and as soon as you've, that has been done, you'd save and continue to go on with the service and to the next screen. Here it gives you the opportunity to check and confirm the upload of the CIC 36. Once you're happy with that, you can save the information and continue with the service. And now to the Articles of Association. Again, if you ha haven't already done so, download the Articles of Association the kick has chosen and save it to a PDF version on your PC. Click, click again on the Select a File to Upload. Choose the Articles of Association. The document will then automatically upload onto the service. Once that's done, you can save and continue the service. Again, you're asked to can check and confirm the Articles of Association that you've uploaded. Once you're happy, confirm and continue to go on with the service. Now here you're asked if any of the directors agree to form the company. This will form your memorandum of association. You do not need to upload any document here. It'll be formed for you. Click the box that confirms that the persons being named are agreeing to form the company and then save and continue with the service. On this page, you're being asked to create an electronic signature. This information will be taken instead of a real signature and is used to confirm that this application complies with company law. It won't be placed on public record. Choose three pieces of information. When you do, you'll have a drop down box to fill in for each one. And once you finish this, save and continue. Almost finished. Please check all the answers you've given throughout the service. This will form two pages. Once you're happy with the information that you've given, tick the box to say you understand that this registration application can't be changed after you proceed. Then click the green button to confirm and send the application through to Company's House. Okay, this is the payment screen. The online incorporation costs £27. Before you pay, you may like to make note of the submission number as you'll need this if there's a problem with your application. However, Company's House will also send it in an email to you. If you're not ready to make the payment, click on the blue link which will explain what you need to do next. Once you are ready, click on the green button to make the payment. So you're done. The application submitted and the payment is made. 
If your application is rejected, your payment will normally be refunded to you within 24 to 48 hours. If after rejection you are ready to resubmit the application, you'll be taken back to the first page of the service on your return and you'll need to build the application again. In the meantime, you may, make, you may make a note of the reference numbers that you're given on this page, but again, they will be emailed to you by Companies House. As you can see on the screen, if the application is successful, you'll receive an email within two working days with the company number and incorporation certificate, a letter with instructions on how to access the company's corporation tax online, and you'll receive another letter within 15 working days with the company's unique taxpayer reference, or UTR, you must keep this safe as you'll need it to fill in your tax returns. Click on the green button then to continue with and close the application. Okay, so the benefits of this new system. There are many benef benefits for using this. Uh, the new process will enable the customer to receive an immediate acknowledgement for receipt of their application. It will also reduce the cost for prospective kit customers to £27 and allow them to pay by card or PayPal. The processing of applications will be dealt with a lot quicker, with an aim to inform the clients of the outcome of their applications within two working days. We will, however, continue to process paper applications at a cost of £35 via cheque or postal order, and the turnaround time on these will remain 10 working days. Another benefit is that HMRC will automatically be informed of the incorporation through the service, saving the customer time in having to do this personally. The online, online process will provide other benefits, such as reducing errors, providing a secure platform to register the CIC, and also environmental savings as you're not using paper to register the kick. All of these reasons make applying to become a kick online a better option than using the original paper format. Uh, here are some contact details for both uh, Companies House and the Kick Office. Uh, there are handouts with this webinar, as you're, you're, you will see, uh, so no need to grab a pen at this time to write these down. So I hope you found this webinar on the new Kick Incorporation online process helpful. It's been a fairly quick run through, but don't worry, as Dave said previously, the Kick team will be posting the webinar on their website, so you will have the opportunity to view and listen to it at your leisure. In the meantime, please continue to ask any questions you may have, and the team will be trying their best to answer them all. Thank you for listening, and I'll just hand you back to Dave. Thanks again. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so, uh, very interesting um, information there, and particularly, um, so particularly helpful, I would imagine, if you're just about to, to set up a community interest company. So, but before we move on, I, I just want to make everybody aware who, who has been involved in today's webinar that um, we've had about 250 agents that have joined us with the webinar today. So, thank you all for taking part. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to the question and answer session. So, if I just, I'm just going to have a look at some of the questions that you've been asking. Um, so, I encourage you just to keep these coming in for the time being, and we're going to pick up as many as we can during the remainder of the webinar. So, the webinar is due to finish at one o'clock, so we will keep looking at those questions as they come into us. So please do remember, keep your questions relevant to today's subject and uh, that we won't be able to address any that are case or client specific. Now, um, what I will say is that I'm going to be reading out your questions, so thank you for asking them. Um, we do have somebody called Marilyn. Marilyn is, um, is our expert today she will be answering those questions for you um, and uh, we'll then be able to get those out to you so I've, so if I just check that uh, Marilyn is available for us at the moment I think, uh, I think that she is hello yes here I am hi Marilyn so what uh, what I've got first is uh, our first question 
um, and that uh, came in quite so quite early on today and uh, it is why will it be cheaper for prospective CIC customers to apply online than applying via paper well this is to encourage the customers to be environmentally friendly and to reduce waste by applying online there is also a reduced cost element to companies house in terms of postage and staffing hours so that's why we be promoting the online service okay so it's it's quite a straightforward uh, quite a straightforward reason there so what we also have next is when will conversions from limited to um, kick become available online we are working closely with companies house to have this feature available as soon as possible but there is no confirmed date at present i mean with the online process being started up we are assuming that a lot of the conversion applications will reduce anyway because they'll be able to do it online first and foremost okay so um there's some something else has come through about it's just quite straightforward really so why can't we use an electronic signature on the cic 36 well this is because the current regulation states that the cic 36 must be signed by the directors a live signature our legal team has specified that this must be a live signature made by the directors <clears throat> excuse me Right. Okay. So it's um, you know it's quite straightforward. Uh, again, you know, some of the some of the questions that you're asking are quite you know they, they need clarification for everybody at the minute. So the next one um, that we can see that's come in is when will the online account filing for CICs be available? Well, that's uh, still in the process of being tested. We're hoping that this will be within the next year um, the online process is first and foremost our aim and then once that's up and running we hope then for the online filing to become available for all kicks right okay so um some we've, we've had an agent one of our one of our attendees today they've asked can uh, can agents pay for cic incorporations via accounts at present, uh, the system doesn't support payment by a company's house account. Payment is only by a card or PayPal. However, we are continuing work with company's house for this method to be available in the future. Right, especially so. Thank, thanks, um, thanks for that, Marilyn. So we've, we've got uh, we've got another one. So, if my application is rejected, how long will it take for me to be reimbursed? Well, as Jackie mentioned in her presentation, um, refunds are normally processed within 24 to 48 working hours. So we're hoping that that will, you know, be the process when it does come online. Okay. So, okay. Uh, thanks for that. We're going to go through um, a few more. Um, the next one that I can see that has come in is uh, how long we, is the registration process by post? Well, we normally give uh, a timeline of between 10 to 15 days. However, it is a lot quicker than that. We allow for that time frame for any errors that might occur. The, once the application is received in the kick office, it's a 24-hour turnaround, and then Companies House have a further three working days with which to complete their process. So it's pretty quick, but we allow the 10 to 15 to be sure. Okay, Sebastian, thank you. Um, thanks, Marilyn. So, one other question, um, and we have, we still have a few to get through, so keep uh, keep firing them into us. Uh, will we be able to submit CIC accounts online in the future? As I say, yes, we are, we are aiming to do that. We've been working uh, very closely with Companies House to get this process up and running as soon as we can, because we know a lot of kicks would prefer to do this process. So yes, hopefully that. Okay, so um, what, um, what our next question is, is, is it easier to convert an existing company to a kick or just start a kick separately? Well, the reason a lot of people set up um, a limited company is to 
to reserve the name as such. You can't reserve a name, but once it's registered on the public uh, register, that's the name of your company. So a lot of people set up a limited company and then go for the conversion process. Um, we prefer, if you're going to set up a kick, to do it from incorporation because some of the errors that occur on a conversion is that online, if you set up a company online, the majority of ordinary limited companies are limited by shares. However, 75% of kicks are limited by guarantee. And so as long as the limited company is set up within the company type that you want, you can convert then over. Company law doesn't allow you to go from a limited by shares to a limited by guarantee or vice versa. So if you want to do it online to make sure you've got the name, uh, that's no problem. But ensure then that you've got the right constitution type then to convert over to the CIC. So it, it's totally up to you. The, the, the speed of the process is exactly the same. Once we receive the conversion application in, it's the same length of time as an ordinary application. But as I say, with the conversion, sometimes the errors are more because of the choice of constitution. Right. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So, Marilyn, um, in terms of speed, um, our next question talks about um, if uh, if they if somebody needs to set up a CIC quickly, do you know if it will be faster to set it up manually or wait for the online service to be made available? Uh, that's a bit like how long is a piece of string because <laughs> because the because the process that isn't live yet as such we're hoping this is going to be very soon. Um, the, the online process is quicker in the fact that if there's an error in the application, they know about it the same day and they can amend it the same day. So in that uh, sense, it is quicker to do it online. Yeah. However, say if the application is received in, there's that you know, 10 to 15 days. So you could wait for the online process and like say if you're making any errors, you know about it instantly and can correct it instantly. With the paper format, you have to wait for all the documentation to come back. So yeah. the choice is yours. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, listen to it. And I, I'm certainly no expert in this field uh, at all, but what it, it does sound like is that the online process um, is more efficient and is, uh, you know, we should encourage people to, to, to go along those those lines. So the next question, and um, I hope this is not, this isn't too tricky. Can you have a registered kick in England and operate in Scotland and Wales also under the same kick registration? Well, a kick can operate throughout the UK. However, it depends on where the registered office is. If the registered office is in Scotland, that's, you know, it, it, it can go from Scotland to England, Wales, and so um, it's where the registered office is. Um, so, but if it's registered in England, yes, the community of benefit can be throughout the whole of the UK. So it's dependent on that. Right. Okay. That makes uh, again. That makes sense. And hopefully, for those uh, for those of you that have asked that question, um, that's also uh, quite clear. Now, the next couple of questions that have been asked, um, you I think you've already covered off about um, online service, whether that's going to be quicker or not. So we, we spoke about that a little bit earlier. Again, um, question here from um, from someone who said, "Can." they switch a limited company to a CIC. That's a kick. Yeah, well, this is a conversion. Yes, they can go from a limited company to a CIC. Uh, however, as I said before, they need to ensure that whatever the lim limited company is, if it's limited by shares, they can only convert to a CIC limited by shares. If it was their intention to be a CIC limited by guarantee, they would need to set up a whole new com company, so incorporate a new one. But if they just want to convert whatever company type they are now over to the CIC, yes, that, they can do that. Okay. Um, the, the next question is about age limits. Um, so are there any age limits for kick members? So over 16 or over 18? Well, those are the things that, uh, that were being asked. Uh, to be truthful, I'm not sure. I know there's an age limit in being a director, but with membership, um, I could say, I suppose, with a sports club, if they got their members involved, those are that that age uh, varies. So, as regards to membership, I'm not sure. So, if 
if I'm in doubt with that one, I always re I would refer to Companies House because they might know if there's an age limit to membership. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, I'm afraid. Okay, so uh, that might be something that um, you uh, the, the ask the asker of that question. Maybe you can um, send in or just search on gov.uk or maybe contact Companies House directly with that specific question. So the the, the next one, I think I'm only going to cover off. Um, this one, maybe one other, is if the company is limited by a guarantee, how are the voting rights dealt with? It's down to the uh, the directors. The, the, they decide internally. They would the voting rights are decided by them. Whether there's different levels of membership and voting rights attached to that, it would be down to the directors of the company to decide. Okay, um, and finally, and I think this just this one will just re reiterate, I think what Jackie mentioned in the presentation. Um, how is the CIC 36 signed? Um, is it digital? Um, or it, it can be digital, it's say, People can take a photo of a live signature on their phone and upload that onto the online document or the paper document, but it needs to be a live signature. It can't be a typed signature using your Times Roman or Calibri or whatever. So yeah, yeah, that makes uh, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Okay, so those are a selection of some of the questions that you have been asking, and hopefully we've uh, we've managed to answer. Uh, pretty much all of those questions. Um, the rest of the questions, um, we've our team of experts who have been busy um, beavering away in the background, responding to you by uh, uh, by message on those questions. On those questions, hopefully um, you've uh, you've got your answers as well. So there are one or two that are still waiting to be answered. Um, so please just bear with the team as they get your uh, get the information together to provide you with. That answer. Um, we're about seven or eight minutes away from the end of today's webinar, so uh, just be mindful that uh, if you ask a question really close to the end of the webinar, it may not get answered, um, unfortunately. So just um, if you need to get it, uh, get it in uh, in the next uh, the next minute or two, and then the, then the team will be able to have a look at it. So I'm going to draw things to a close shortly. But I just have a few reminders for you to note before I do. If you haven't already, this is your last chance to download the handouts that are provided if you would like copies of those handouts. Um, if you've experienced any problems with the downloads, then just a reminder that you can write to the email address that was shared with you at the beginning of today's event. And if you're on a desktop or a laptop device and you would like to save the questions that have been shared via the questions box today, then please click on file and then save questions log at the top of your control panel now. If you're on a Mac, uh, it's slightly different. Click on the go to meeting bar, click on file and then select save message and then you'll be able to do the same. So if you found today's webinar useful and informative and would highly recommend to a colleague, then please, uh, please do so. So that uh, the more people that know about the webinars that are provided um, by HMRC, um, then the better for our customers. OK, so before we go, uh, a quick word on EU exit uh, for you and your clients. The UK will be leaving the EU on the 29th of March 2019, so we're not too far away from that now. So to prepare for a no deal, businesses must act now. If you import, if the business imports or, and or exports with the EU, then the first step is to register for a UK Economic Operator Registration Identification Number or an EORI for, um, for short, or that's the acronym that gets used. Without an EORI, you will no longer be able to import or export goods with the EU if we leave without a deal. 
it only takes 10 minutes to apply on gov.uk so when you go to gov.uk select hmrc and then select get eori to help you start your eu exit preparations today there's a link to get a uk eori to trade within the eu in the handout so please please if any of your clients are involved in that then please get them to, uh, to have a look at that as soon as possible so um, this is going to be a shameless plug um, the next talking points webinar is tomorrow um, at midday and we are going to be looking at corporation tax um, and the carried forward losses and the changes that were made in 2017 so if you want to find out more then please sign up the link to register for the webinar was included in recent invitations that have been sent out, but we'll also get a copy of that link in the chat box for you um, for, for you now. So that information is the, available for you. If you do want to get involved in that or any other talking points webinars in, in the future, we would encourage you to submit your questions in advance so that we can try to address these during the webinar as we did just earlier, as I was discussing with, with Marilyn. The email address to send these to was included in the invitation to the webinar. So please include the title of the webinar in the subject line of your email. And if you have any colleagues who you feel would be interested, then please do share the invitation with them. Alternatively, you can also find the registration link listed under our forthcoming program of webinars on gov.uk. So finally, um, I'd just like to say thank you to Jackie and Marilyn for their contributions and also to everybody that has joined us for the webinar today. Um, you are going to be asked for a to complete a short survey at the end of today's webinar and we really do appreciate your feedback if this is a webinar that we have been exceptional at then we want to know about it just so that we can make sure that we're uh, exceptional again but if we haven't quite managed to live up to your expectations then please let us know as well and uh, we can do something about that so the next time that we are delivering a webinar we can improve what we do so thanks again um hope you can join us again soon um we are finishing a couple of minutes early we will leave the webinar open for uh, a couple of minutes just so that it gives you the opportunity to save that question and answer log that, um, that we talked about earlier um, so enjoy the rest of your day it's uh, it's a little bit uh, damp here in the northwest of england where i am delivering that uh, where i'm um, delivering the webinar from today but uh, hopefully it's uh, it's not too bad in uh, your part of the country so um thanks for joining us enjoy the rest of your day hope to see you all again soon